being overweight is obviously bad for your health. However, your body weight can often be misleading if you carry more muscle. What matters more is your body fat percentage. So in this video, I'm going to share with you what are the guidelines for optimal body fat percentage and how can you measure it. So make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. Let's start with what's a good body fat percentage to have. Too much body fat is clearly bad and obesity is a major cause of premature death. However, you can also be too skinny, which increases the risk of frailty and malnutrition. Essential body fat stores needed for survival for men are 3 to 5% and for women it's 8 to 12%. Below 15% for women and 8% for men, you start to see a decline in testosterone and other reproductive hormones. However, even getting extremely lean has been seen to lower inflammation and improve cardiometabolic risk factors in already fit and healthy individuals. So yes, being too skinny can be harmful, but being slightly leaner and having less body fat is generally healthier for most people. So what's the optimal body fat percentage for longevity? Let's look at the studies. Among middle-aged adults, they have found that for women, there's less of a link between body fat percentage and the risk of mortality between a body fat of 20 to 35%. Women start to see increased risk from obesity after a body fat percentage of 35%, which is quite severe obesity. However, below 35%, there's almost no difference in how much body fat you have, except at extreme leanness. For men, however, the situation is much different. They find that for men, there's a linear association between body fat percentage and risk of mortality. The higher the body fat percentage, the higher the risk is. Anything below 20% body fat is linked to a lower risk than anything above 20%. And the risk decreases linearly even below 15%, where the risk is the lowest. So unfortunately for men, it matters a lot more to be fit and healthy and to have less body fat than it matters for women. Women can get away with a lot more body fat than men in terms of health outcomes and it matters much less. Excess body fat becomes dangerous to women only if they're in the more severe obesity category. Whereas for men, it's already if you start to get love handles, your risk tends to increase and the bigger the love handles get, the higher the risk is going to be. This is supported by other studies on centenarians where they find that the only men who reach the age of 100 are the ones who have excellent metabolic and physical health. Women who make it to 100 tend to have worse health than men, but they still reach the age of 100, possibly thanks to the cardio and neuroprotective effects of estrogen. What it means is that as a man, you would want to strive for excellent health and a lower body fat percentage and more better fitness. For women, it matters much less but you would still see that the healthier women and fitter women would have a lower risk of mortality than the unhealthy women. It's just that difference is much smaller. Okay, so how do we know our body fat percentage? The gold standard for measuring body composition, including muscle mass, body fat, and bone density is the DEXA scan. It costs around $100 to $200 and is very useful to assess your body composition. However, you can also get a pretty good estimate about your body fat percentage by looking at the mirror. I found some nice comparisons by Menno Henselmans, who's a bodybuilding coach and researcher. He's made a great visual guide to body fat percentages that are based on the DEXA scans of other people. Here's the graph for men. Remember, anything below 15% is lower risk and above 15%, the risk starts to increase. With 15%, you should still see small ab definitions, but above 16%, the abs fade away and you get the double chin and love handles. The higher the body fat percentage, the bigger the gut, the love handles and the chin. Here's the graph for women. For women, the optimal body fat percentage is below 35% and above extreme leanness. So somewhere between 17 to 35% is fine for women. And at least based on the studies, there's much less difference in mortality risk in women going from 17% to 35%. Women also tend to store body fat more around the hips and thighs instead of the gut, whereas men store the fat in the belly. The mirror test is a pretty good and useful tool to assess your body fat percentage. It's not perfect, but you know, if you don't see abs as a man, you don't have any ab definition, then you're not 10% body fat, you're probably much higher than that. However, there's another important metric that is also equally as important as your body fat percentage. It's waist circumference. Waist circumference reflects how and where you store your body fat. If you have a very big waistline and belly, then it means you're storing your body fat around the liver and organs, which is called visceral fat. This is the worst worst kind of fat because visceral fat promotes inflammation and insulin resistance. People with higher waistlines have a much higher risk of mortality than people who store their fat around the hips and thighs, which is called subcutaneous fat. It's found that the higher your waistline, the higher your risk of heart disease and mortality for both men and women. You want to keep your waistline as low as possible. The lowest risk for men is below 85 centimeters or 33 inches, and for women below 70 centimeters or 25.5 inches. The risk increases linearly the higher the waist circumference is. 
So it's not only body fatness that matters, but also where you store the body fat. Ideally, with better metabolic health, we want to store the fat around the skin and around the thighs and the hips instead of around the organs, which is where the visceral fat comes from. And visceral fat is usually more of a sign of overconsuming more processed foods, more like unhealthier lifestyles, alcohol consumption. So if you are a healthier person, but you have a little bit more body fat, but your waist circumference isn't that large, then it means that you're just carrying too much body fat and you would want to lose it. But if you see that your waist circumference is also big, even though you might have low body fat at other parts of the body, then it means that you have high amounts of visceral fat, which you know ideally you would want to lose that as fast as possible. If you want to learn where to start with that, then check out my evidence-based weight loss video. Overall, it is quite beneficial to have slightly less body fat and of course have a lower waist circumference. We will want to keep our waist circumference as low as possible. With body fat, we don't need to be extremely lean, but generally being more on the leaner side and having a more muscle mass is better for longevity for both men and women. But for women, it matters much less. If you want to learn more about the science of longevity and how to slow down aging and add healthy years to your life, then you can pre-order my new book, The Longevity Leap. It's based on over 8,000 studies, meta-analyses, and scientific articles. You can pre-order via the link in the description and you'll get the book in September 2024. That's it for this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.